Hello, Oscillate Sync here. They say that jealousy is a sin, and that being the case, consider this a confessional. There is a way that I see people perform with electron boxes that makes me very, very jealous because I just can't pull it off myself. And it's those kind of performances where people are constantly tweaking the knobs to make variations of the sound and switching pages and tweaking knobs and switching tracks and tweaking knobs and making use of the save states uh, constantly to create variations on their patterns. And I just can't do it. My brain isn't wired that way. I take too long to make choices. And when I do make those wild changes, I end up messing up the pattern or not saving the state or reloading the state when I meant to uh, carry on or saving the wrong state and recording over my sort of baseline state. It's a mess. I can't do it. And I'm incredibly jealous of people who can. But if I may just for a moment try to justify my ineptitude, from my perspective, there is um, kind of a shortcoming from working that way uh, that's introduced by the way that the uh, user interface works on the electrons. And this is not a slight on the electron boxes. They are absolute bay as far as I'm concerned. But if you're constantly tweaking these controls, um, you do have to constantly move between pages and sometimes you need to double tap to get to the right page you want. And it means that you can't do things like darken a sound in the filter page while simultaneously increasing the reverb send or, um, I don't know, uh, coming into the syn page here on the syntax and um, reducing the decay while simultaneously introducing more uh, delay while simultaneously cutting the bottom end with the bass width filter. It's kind of one page at a time and, you know, two knobs at most for if you're particularly adept, I guess. And that's somewhat limiting. What we really need, what I really need, is a macro control to control multiple parameters all at once. And guess what? It's already included. The techniques that I'm going to show in this video work in exactly the same way on the Syntact and on the Digitone. They don't work on the Digitact. The functionality just isn't in there currently. Um, and I say currently because, you know, fingers crossed Electron uh, have been adding lots of features to the small box Electrons over the last you know, number of years. And in particular, they've been cross porting features between them. So, um, this isn't like adding a, a new sound engine to the Digitact or anything. Um, so fingers crossed, this might be something that makes its way to the Digitact at some point. But for now, we're just talking about the Syntact and the Digitone. Um, in terms of the way that the features actually operate on those two, they operate in exactly the same way, but the way that you get to them is slightly different. Uh, so on the Digitone, the way that you'll access the menu that we're after here, the easiest way to do it would just be hold funk and hit trig, which will take you to the setup menu. Um, or you can go into the settings, into sounds, and then into setup from there. For the syntax, what we're going to want to do is hold down funk and hit what was the kind of uh, sound setup menu now is the song mode um, settings, so funk and hit sound there. It'll take us into this menu and then we want to go in to setup. So what we're looking for in this menu are pitch bend, velocity mod, modulation wheel, breath controller, and aftertouch. Each of these five entries here allow us to create a macro control over four different parameters in different directions with different amounts. This is kind of massive and I think it's often overlooked because A, it's buried away in a menu for one, but B, pitch bend, velocity, modulation wheel, breath controller, aftertouch, these are all things that are sort of associated with keyboard controllers and in the case of breath controllers, uh, wind controllers. And I don't think a lot of people actually make use of external keyboards with the Syntact, um, uh, well, the Syntact even less than the, the Digitone, I think. But these give you an incredible amount of power, especially when you combine them with an external controller, because um, every external controller that has knobs on it that you can assign to CC numbers can send mod wheel information because mod wheel is just CC number one. Breath controllers, it sounds like something to do with, um, with wind controllers, it's just CC number two. 
aftertouch is a little bit rarer on a knobby kind of controller but for example um what i'll show later uh, is the beats that pro can do it at uh, pitch bend um if you've got a keyboard controller certainly uh, a velocity mod probably not as applicable to the macro side of things but we shouldn't forget that we do have velocity recorded inside the sequencer and you can have control over um four different parameters based on the velocity as well which when it comes to programming and stuff can be a real real lifesaver so um let's take a look at how this works not just to use um the mod wheel one just as an example so at the moment I'm on my kick drum sound here and I've now got control um, over four different parameters. Uh, the way this menu works is that your top row of knobs allows you to choose a parameter that you're going to um, modulate. The bottom row of knobs give you positive or negative control over that, kind of like the depth control on the LFO, I guess. And then what's really useful when you're setting these sounds up is that you have this control on the level data, which essentially pretends to be the mod wheel or pretends to be aftertouch or pretends to be the breath controller as you're setting things up. Just makes it really easy to work out um, what you're doing, basically. So um, we've got this sound here. Let's say um, when I want to turn the mod wheel up, I want to get a longer sound first. So I can come into Meta here, and this will look very familiar to people who have played around with the LFOs, and I'm gonna look for my decay. Uh, and then if I wanna set the maximum that it's going to be pushed up by, I can turn my uh, level knob up to full and choose my new decay. So maybe something like that. And maybe when I want the decay to go longer, perhaps I want it to be more overdriven so I can come through here and find my overdrive. Filthy. Uh, but maybe when that's happening, I also want it to get a little darker so I can come into my filter here and we can turn it down instead. And now we've got um, currently just on this knob here, A range of sounds that's quite con sort of transformative of the sound all at once on a single control and of course we could assign this to a MIDI controller to do that kind of thing as well and we can layer these up potentially so perhaps on the uh, breath controller we wanted to set up a different set of parameters so perhaps instead of um, it getting more distorted perhaps we want to um, take some of the um, sweep out of it so we can, can we can turn it up so we can hear what we're doing so it becomes thunkier when we get there and perhaps we want to I don't know uh, send it into the reverb we could do that. And those two things could be happening at once. So if we had a controller that could send mod and breath control and spoil it, we do. Um, we could be combining those two different sounds as well. That's basically all of the theory that we need in order to get this set up and working. So let's maybe think um, about how you might set up a MIDI controller to do that. And I'm going to use the BeatStep Pro as an example, but any controller that has assignable knobs or faders or even buttons could be used to create this kind of macro control. Right, we're back with old faithful BeatStep Pro here. This is the controller that I am using, but any controller which can send out MIDI CC and various other messages uh, with knobs or faders, uh, so something like the original BeatStep or the um, SQ64 uh, from Korg, one of the fade foxes, you know, there's, there's lots of them out there. Anything where you can configure what you are sending on the knobs uh, is going to work really great in this environment. The way I have the BeatStep Pro set up in this case is that my first row of knobs are set to act as mod wheels. And remember, mod wheel is just CC number one uh, on channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The next row of knobs I have set up to send 
after touch information actually uh, which is not as common maybe as the cc numbers but the beats that broken do it so great uh two channels one two three four five six seven and eight uh these buttons don't do anything or they maybe do but i haven't set them up to do anything specific um these buttons are set up to be toggles um where um when it's on it sends um breath control which is just uh, midi cc two at its maximum value which is 127 and when you turn it off it sends it as zero so what that allows me to do in the context of uh, the syntax is basically have two states that i can kind of toggle between uh, within the patch and this is going to be um, potentially for each sound uh, and then i've just got this one to send out some um, some sounds basically they just send out uh, note numbers so um in terms of how things are set up on the syntax, uh, what you want to look at is how your MIDI channels are assigned to the tracks. And for that, you want to come into your setup menu and go to MIDI config and into channels. And here you'll have uh, the list of your channels. Obviously, on uh, the Digitone, you only have four, but here we have 12. And this tells you which channel each of the tracks is going to receive MIDI on. And by default, and it's the way it's set up here, it's just going to be uh, track one getting channel one, track two getting channel two, and so on. It is worth um, bearing in mind, of course, you can assign these to whatever you want. And um, you can, in fact, sign, uh, assign two channels, two tracks to a single channel, I should say. So if you wanted to have a setup where you have similar sorts of things happening, on the controls for two different sounds at once you can do that or maybe a more creative way of thinking about that even then is having it so that you have two channels which kind of cross over so that when uh, you turn up one knob uh, one channel gets brighter there one gets darker or gets louder and quieter one gets shorter and longer you know there are lots of ways that you can think about it depending on what you're trying to achieve for simplicity's sake i'm just going to have my digital tr tracks here on syntax just receiving the channel number that they are labeled with just to make life a little bit easier right midi out of the beatstep pro to midi in on the syntax and if we uh, start the pattern because we've already got uh, two of those uh, things set up um, i should be able to turn the mod wheel knob and get the boomier sound and then the other thing with the uh, reverb was on the breath controller, so I've got that as a toggle there. And we can combine them if we want to. And if I wanted a uh, final one there on this row, maybe something which thins things out might be nice. So I can come into the sound here and to set up, make sure we're on the right track. Uh, this row is off touch the way I have this set up. Uh, come into here, turn this up so I can hear the changes. Uh, so, probably just use something like the uh, base of the base width filter to press the wrong button. Should have pressed yes. Uh, always do that. Try again. Let's use the base or the base width filter. Turn it up to get a thinner sound. Uh, maybe we want to distort a bit more when you do that. So we can go into Syn and Overdrive. And we just take a little bit of the decay off. Syn and Decay, turn that one down. So we kind of have a thin version there as well on that knob. Move up there. And we can combine them in different amounts. If we want to. Uh, so let's 
take a look at that snare um, for a second. So um, one thing I think would be really cool for this kind of sound is to have a setting where um, you could do kind of the dub thing where you send it to the uh, delay just for one hit and we could toggle it with this. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so we're on my snare. Uh, this is breath control. Uh, so come into breath controller, uh, turn it up so we can hear it. My meta here is going to be my amp delay send. Lovely. Uh, probably when we do that, we also want to make it a tiny bit darker, perhaps. So I could maybe use the uh, filter width this time. Let's bring that in on the base width filter. So now I can just trigger that for one hit if I want to, which is quite cool. Uh, maybe put something on this one as well. So that's my mod wheel, maybe a longer sound. So we can come in here and do the modulation envelope, turn that up a bit, to get a bit more noisiness in it. And then also the uh, decay, turn that one up, make sure we're listening to it, of course. So we have those controls there. Um, let's move on to the hi-hats, uh, which I've just got going, doing a 16th kind of thing. One thing that you shouldn't overlook in the um, macro controls, if you like, is that you can uh, use them to control the depth of LFO. So we can maybe set up a panning thing on here, but not get the panning going and have that controllable on a knob. So uh, LFO uh, one, oh, I was playing with this earlier, so I've already got the panning set up on here. So if we turn up the depth here, yeah, we've got a nice bit of panning going on there, but we don't want to be turning it up on here. We want to be turning it up on here instead. So go to sound and setup, mod wheel, uh, set this as the LFO one depth. Turn it up so I can hear it. Get the maximum amount. Let's play as much as we want. Yep. Maybe it needs to be slightly shorter when you do that as well. So we can come in here and choose to K and turn that down a bit. And maybe on this knob, we could just have a different kind of sound variation where we mess with the, like the shimmer and the modulation amount. So that's my aftertouch row. Um, turn it up. Uh, we can change the shimmer. High pitch kind of thing. Um, at the radio amount, have a look at the modulation envelope, and then also maybe we could Open up the attack so it becomes a shaker kind of sound. Have the shaker moving around, convert it back into a hi hat. 
to a little bit so it's not too shaker, it's just a different sound. You know, quite a lot of control over stuff. Um, got a little chord thing there on that track. I think really uh, uh, an obvious thing for that one is to have, just use the mod wheel like you would normally, which is to give it some pitch wobble. So let's come into the LFO here and select tuning. Very speed up a bit. Something like that. That might be a, a nice one to have. Probably don't need to do anything but that, really. Uh, so we can come into our sound for this track, go into mod wheel. That's LFO1 depth. Turn up so we can hear it. Oops. <laughs> Maybe on this knob we can do quite a different kind of variation. Like maybe give it a um, more of a paddy kind of sound, perhaps. So we could aim for something where maybe we give it kind of that kind of feel. So I've not got any envelope amount on it at the moment, so I could probably just set this as what I wanted. So we're going to want to turn up the envelope amount there and then probably also turn up the attack on the amp at the same time. And you can do that with knobs normally because it's on two different pages. So um, on the after touch, what are we going to do? So we'll go into the filter and just darken it a bit to begin with. into the filter again and turn up the amount, the envelope depth. Cool, uh, maybe give it a bit more uh, resonance on the filter. And then also on the amp page, up the attack time. Cool. Uh, then we now have a couple of different variations along the way here. So that's some things on there. Uh, on this last track, we've got like a bass thing going on. At the moment, it's kind of really basic. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, but we could really liven up with some um, filter automation. Um, or maybe not filter automation, maybe um, uh, oh, uh, like a held LFO, random LFO uh, to the filter amount or something. Uh, let's try that. Uh, so if we send an LFO to the envelope depth, uh, we set it to a random and set it to hold. Immediately a lot more interesting. So that's one thing we can do. Uh, when we do that, we probably also want to give it some more resonance as well, don't we? So uh, again, that's on two different pages, so we can do that normally. 
come into sound. Uh, we'll do it on the mod wheel, perhaps. So we've got the mod wheel here for that channel. So we've set up our LFO. We just need to increase its depth. It was LFO 2, not LFO 1. Also the resonance. Where is the resonance? There it is. Uh, that makes it quite a lot louder as well. So we could also compensate the volume on that as well. We come into the amp volume and just And let's just try a bit of uh, overdrive as well. Compensate the volume some more. Cool, yeah. And again, we can set up like a variation of it on my um, on off switch here for the breath controller. So perhaps we can make it like a wobby kind of uh, increase the attack of the filter kind of thing. That kind of thing and throw it into the d delay or the reverb. Try something like that anyway. Uh, so, setup menu, breath controller, it's going to be on there, and filter attack time. Yeah, cool, compared with that one. Uh, and then reverb, send. most uh, inspired pattern ever. Uh, it does give us a bunch of controls over these sounds. you can set up macro controls on the syntax and dig it out. I hope that maybe shed some light on what I suspect is a slightly underutilized corner of the syntax and the digger tone. Uh, if you did find it useful, if you did enjoy the video, then as always, if you could leave a like on the video, that's massively appreciated. And if you're not already, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more 
synth fun, including lots of things to do with Electron, because I've come up with a few more things that I want to talk about um, in the coming weeks and months. Other than that, as always, take care, and until next time, bye-bye.